Good morning. Would you stand with us this morning? Yours is the name high above any other. Yours is the kingdom forever you reign. And yours is the power that lifted us out of the grave. Yours is the heart that is beating inside us. Yours is the glory and all of the fame. And yours is the love that you pour down on us. We're rising up to sing your praise. To the King Almighty, to the one who saves. Be glory and honor for all our days. With our hands toward heaven and our voices raised. To the King Almighty, we give all our praise. Yeah. Yours is the whole earth and everything in it. Yours are the stars that you spoke into place. And yours are the shouts of the sons and daughters Lifting up your holy name To the King Almighty, to the one who saves Be glory and honor for all our days With our hands toward heaven and our voices raised To the King Almighty we give all our praise For an ending mercy, for amazing grace for life everlasting for sins erased with our hands toward heaven and our voices raised to the king almighty we give all our praise yeah. rescue rescue Redeemed, we're alive, we're forgiven, shouting our praise with our hands toward heaven. Rest, we redeemed, we're alive, we're forgiven, shouting our praise with our hands toward heaven. Rest, you redeemed, we're alive, we're forgiven, shouting our praise with our hands toward heaven. To the King Almighty, to the who saved be glory and honor for all our days with our hands toward heaven and our voices raised to the king almighty we give all our praise for an ending mercy for amazing grace for life everlasting for sins erased with our hands toward heaven and our voices raised to the king almighty we give all our praise yeah. Oh, yes, we do, Lord. We give it all to you today. To the King Almighty, we give all our praise. Yeah. Here with the hands. With our hands toward heaven and our voices raised. To the King Almighty, we give all our praise. Yeah. Amen. Give it praise this morning, church. Why don't you take 30 seconds and greet somebody around you. Uh, tell them uh, good morning. And, uh, yeah. High five. High five. Tell them some nice church things. I don't know. You look good. I'm trying not to. you have a seat and uh, check out this short video. Welcome to One Church. Our church is all about people becoming disciples of Jesus. What does that look like? We connect, we grow, and we make a difference. A special welcome to all guests. Whether it's your first time, second time, or maybe you haven't been here in a while, we are so glad you're here. In the seat back pocket in front of you, you'll find a card labeled, So You're New Here. 
This will provide a few details to make your visit the best it can be. Also in the seat back pocket, you'll find the Connect card. If you're here for the first time, fill that out and let us know you're here. Bring it to the hub in the back, and we got some special info and a gift for you there. If you're here for the second time, we would love to know you're back. Fill out your Connect card. Bring it to the hub. We've got a special gift for you as well. A $10 gift card of your choice. Whether you're a guest or a regular, the Connect card is a way to sign up for things. Information about the church, ministry or events, as well as opportunities to volunteer and serve. You can also request prayer or let us know of a decision that you're making today to follow Jesus. After filling out the Connect card, you can place it in the offering or drop it by the hub on your way out. We are so glad you're here. Hey, good morning, One Church. Oh my gosh, like, can you feel it? Like, 2018 is here. I am so excited. I feel like goodbye, 2017, and we are ready. It is going to be a fantastic year, and we just have so much going on this year, so much coming our way. I'm excited. Um, It's a big year. This year, we celebrate our fifth anniversary as a church, our fifth birthday. Yes, that's a big deal. And so um, if you have not joined Pastor Tracy and I at our home for a Connect lunch, we have one coming up on the 21st um, of this month. And, you know, maybe you're a visitor and, and you haven't come before to a Connect lunch. Or maybe, you know, you've been part of One Church and maybe part of Bethel and you've never come to a Connect lunch. And we talk about it every Sunday. Come. It'll be fun. And we'll feed you lunch and we'll hang out and we'll have a good time. So we, it's coming up on the 21st. We'd love to see you there. Also, on the 21st, we have our Grow Dinner, um, and then the 28th, we're going to have our Make a Difference Night. So, if you've been to a Connect Lunch or you join us that day for a Connect Lunch, we would like to invite you. We'll we'll give you lunch and dinner the same day, so you can come be a part of that. That's a good Uh, deal. I mean, for me, it's like, wow, I don't have to cook two meals in one day? That's awesome, and I don't have to pay for that? That's even better. Absolutely. So, we want you to join us. Uh, Sheila, get you more information on that. If you've been to our Connect Lunch, uh, you'll be hearing about that here shortly. And that's so. just, just how you find out about what One Church is all about and what the network is all about and what, we're, what the bigger vision of One Church is. So we would just love to have you there. All right. We got some reminders we need to talk to you about. Um, lots of things happening today. So we're going to start off with the fast. We're starting off with the fast. Okay. Um, So today we're starting off with a seven-day fast. Now, if you have kids over in uh, the kids' building, they're also getting a lesson on fasting today, and they're going to have the opportunity to join you in the fast. On Facebook, you will see daily devotionals coming out to help you with your fast, but today is your kickoff day. So if you have not decided yet, how you're going to participate in the fast, please pray on it. If you need some direction, please talk to us about it. But seven days about what is God doing for you, for the church, for the kingdom this year, and what's your part? Um, And I don't see it. I know we have an insert for the fast. I'm not sure. Is it at the hub? We'll grab it at the hub. You, it'll give you some more information about the, the fast and everything. Oh, you have it in yours. I just don't have it in mine. Oh. Okay. <laughs> that's fine. That's, that's great. Can as you hold long it up? as you Which have one yours. Is it? It's the seven days. Okay. Yeah. If you don't have one, we'll have them on the back table on your way out. Okay. And we- each, uh, each day on our Facebook page and on our app, we're going to have devotionals by the pastors. So you can follow along with those uh, with the fast. All right. Uh, Catalyst. We have our Catalyst are having an all-nighter that's going to happen on, and it's really small, January 12th, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. It's all night. 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Yeah, that's what it says on the slide, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. It's right. Okay, so it's $15 for our teens. So basically, if your kids are in Catalyst Youth here, they can join the bigger One Church Kids Group, and this is their all-nighter at the Bethel campus. Lots of fun, safe environments. They'll have pizza. They'll have games. There'll be a girls-only zone. They'll have some dodgeball. It's, it's always a lot of fun. Playing hide-and-seek at church is so much fun. They love that, right? right? Are you guys doing glow sticks too? Yeah? So Grady will be there if you need more information. It's um, $15, and, and, and the good thing is you'll send your teen. They'll be gone all night. They'll come home. They wouldn't have slept. They'll sleep all day. 
So just think that's 24 hours. Like you don't have to have a conversation with your team. And I have, I, I, I like that. <laughs> I like that. Cause our teens, they talk all the time. Yeah. Right. So anyway, it's great, great lessons, great fun, great bonding, great way to teach uh, the teens that, you know, you can have great friendships uh, in your church family. I, I believe they have a guest speaker coming in. It's a former uh, San Francisco 49er. That's oh. going to be there. Uh, we might be sneaking in. Do you know in. his name? I don't know any Niners. Otis Smith. Otis Smith. <laughs> so uh, he'll, oh, yeah. he'll be there. So more some kids of you, are going now. All some the dads of you are like, yeah, are like, hey, can my I kid. volunteer to be a chaperone? <laughs> All right. Uh, Talk so, to Grady. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. All right. Next one. What's we next? Lots of them. We do. Valentine's okay. Cookies. Valentine cookie kickoff. Our kids ministry, they are embracing 2018. And you know, every year we raise money and we help the kids um, gather up some money to be able to go to summer camp. And they're starting early this year. They're doing their first Valentine cookie kickoff. And that's today in your in your planner. There's a little uh, Valentine's thingy. It's a cookie. If you can't tell, it's a cookie. Um, and on the back side, uh, the leaders are asking for some donation of items because we want the kids to, to get as much profit as they can to put, towards, um, to, to put towards their camp and to help our counselors go. So more information will be coming. We'll, be ha we'll take pre-sale orders. Uh, Cheryl McKay and Tiffany are, are heading it up, and they're looking for bakers and baking things. So Tiff's number's on the back of here. You can text her if you can make some donations to help with this awesome project. All right. Also, in your, in your bulletin today, you have a save the dates. This is like network, big stuff, all campuses um, that, that just help you save some dates. The big one, though, we want you to uh, save is the volunteer rally that's coming January 26th. This morning as I was getting ready and I was going through the service order, I counted up. Um, just in the one service order, 30 people that were volunteering this morning, not counting all those that are volunteering in kids. So we have about 40 people this morning that are going to volunteer and serve the kingdom. And so we want to celebrate that. We want to honor that. So the, Friday, January 26th, mark that on your calendars. It's all of our campuses and all of our volunteers coming together to celebrate. And it's never the same 40. I mean, some people serve every week, you know, but the truth is everybody's on, on, a, on a rotation. So there's way more than 40 of us that are serving on, on Sunday. So mark your calendars. We want to invite you to, to be there with us and just celebrate you for serving the kingdom. And okay, the One Church app, uh, if you haven't downloaded it yet, this is the One Church app. Now, when, when you go and you search your app store, make sure you find the right One Church app because there's several different ones, okay? But you'll be able to identify Riverbank as your specific campus. You'll be able to get videos. You'll be able to get events, uh, services, and it's all there. Download it. If you need help, see somebody under 12. They will help you get it on your phone. <laughs> All right. Um, another thing is it is that time in February we're going to be having our annual business meeting. And as a nonprofit, we're required to have a board of directors. And part of that is every year we vote two new board members. Two members come off, two members go on, and they serve a three-year term. So uh, it's that time in the year for nominations. Um, so any member, any partner um, can be nominated. And it go to the committee. The committee evaluates and walks through those and then presents to the body of uh, the church um, those that we're going to be voting on at our business meeting. So you can read more about that. It's in your bulletin. Um, if you have a name that you would like to nominate, um, you are welcome to do that. We have currently, we have Dave McKay is uh, a board member from our campus, and he's got one more year. And he's, then he's free. He's freedom. Yeah. Uh, but he's doing a great job. He's also the treasurer for our board. So uh, he's helping keep track of things and making sure we're doing things uh, the right way. So uh, check that out. There's more information there. And, and if you know of someone who you think might be good or you yourself are like, hey, I'd like to serve on the board, you know, you can talk to Dave and he can fill you in about what the role is all about. And, and we really would like as many of you to be at the once a year meeting, especially if, if you're a partner with us. 
okay? Uh, and just so you can see what happens on the business side and, and you can ask questions and get a bigger picture of what's going on. Okay, my last announcement, ladies, is the Sweet Life Conference in March, the second and third of March. How many of you have been to a Sweet Life Conference before? Okay, ladies. Just kidding. Just kidding. Oh, gosh. I just want to be supporting. So Good, thank you. thank you. Thank you. That's nice. Okay, um, uh, this is the last year that Sweet Life is going to be at the House Modesto, okay? We've had it here for years, but the truth is the conference is outgrowing the house, which is a good problem. So this will be our last opportunity to go to Sweet Life in our own city, and after this, we're going to have to travel. So it's time to sign up. I know some people have already bought their tickets because uh, they go really fast. We have some flyers at the upcoming events table. If you need information, it's time to sign up, though, because tickets are, are going and will be gone soon. Okay? All right. Um, just the last thing, as we go get ready for offering and prepare for offering, um, some things that are happening, some ministry wins that we're excited about are the people that are getting involved here and, and helping out. We have uh, recently, I put together, talked to about 10 guys, and we're in groups of two, two uh, five teams that are serving to take care of our landscaping and lawns. So if you notice, it was nice and mowed. It wasn't six feet high. Um, and just lots of help happening there. And th something that we've kind of walked through this last season is sometimes we can get in the habit of, oh, I got to serve because I go to that church or it's part of the church. But we're really feeling like God's ch shifting in us that it's about the kingdom of God. It's about what we can do and partner with each other for the kingdom. And so it's exciting to see what God's doing along with. We have a couple of our small groups that are helping out with a project in our nursery um, and, and just getting involved in different areas. So I just want to say that's a huge win for us. Yes. And this is a shift. This is a spiritual shift. This is not just, you know, Pastor Tracy and Shelly up here like, oh, we're going to get more stuff done around the around done at the church in 2018. This is a spiritual shift. The Lord is moving us into a direction of a deeper understanding of what it means to be part of the kingdom and how our service and what we say and do to each other, to our leadership, and in the body of Christ that, he, that will lead others to come to him. So I'm really excited about this season. It was so cool to drive yesterday and see a uh, Tony and Harry, as I was on my way to a kids' ministry meeting to drive by and see them mowing grass and with their blowers, you know, I was like, woo, woo, go, guys. We're praying for a real mower, though. Our little yard machine. We need Some things we don't pay or yeah. pray about, we just buy. Yeah. We just buy that mower. Let's just buy that mower. Uh, so, exciting. I'm going to invite the ushers to come at this time, and I'm so excited. As we ended 2017, we ended in the black. We don't want red. No red. We, no red. No red. So, uh, and we didn't even have to have a Black Sunday. Uh, so we, Was that a joke? Black Friday. Come on, retail Thanks. people. You got to be with it. Johnny, a little quicker. I know you've been out for a little bit, but a little quicker with that. Help me out. Um, no, it's exciting. Um, not only that, to give uh, over $50,000 through Kingdom Builders we've been able to give away and, and, and that's the just Lord. spread the gospel. We're a so. little church. That's, that's the Lord. Yeah. I mean, that's the Lord using us and yeah. partnering. We get to partner with him. That's amazing that yeah. we gave $50,000 yeah. in so 2017. I, I'm so grateful to be a part of what uh, this family. So thank you so much for your faithfulness. Lord, we just give you the praise and the glory today. We ask that you would just bless this offering. Lord, and I pray that you would bless those who faithfully and obediently um, give of their, their finances, Lord. And we just know, we understand that, Lord, when we're faithful to you, you're faithful back to us. When we're obedient, you pour out blessings. So, Lord, I pray in 2018, it would be a year of blessing, Lord, as we follow you and we walk with you, Lord. And we just thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, as they're serving you this morning and we uh, prepare to go back into a time of worship, I think it's uh, one of the great things about this being the first Sunday of the year is we get to start this Sunday with communion. We get to start the year out with honoring the Lord and remembering his death and his resurrection. 
And so this morning as we go into worship, we have the communion set up here. And we're just going to invite you to come and worship the Lord. And you can take your elements. You can partake of them down here. You can go to your seats. You can find a place in this altar. But it's just a time of worship. It's a, it's a Lord, at the beginning of 2018, my focus is going to be on you and the work that you did for me on the cross. Now, here at One Church, we have open communion. So what that means simply is if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you have a relationship with him, then we invite you to join us with communion. The Bible talks about it. Paul gave us some instructions in 1 Corinthians, um, and he took those instructions from the Lord's Supper, and he said this. He said, this is my body. Now, this is a cracker. It's not It's a simple. He said, this is my body, which is broken for you. also took the cup and he said, this cup, this cup is my blood. Now ours is Welch's grape juice. But what it represents is the grace that was poured out from that cross. The forgiveness that was poured out from that cross. So as we celebrate the Lord's Supper this morning, we're declaring, Lord, thank you for your body that was broken and bruised for that was poured out and shed for forgiveness of sin. Because here's the truth. If Jesus didn't go to the cross, we would have had to go there for ourselves. The truth is, the wages of sin is death. And he took those wages upon himself so that we didn't have to. So that's what we're celebrating this morning as we go into this time of worship. Would you stand with us this morning? The worship team is going to begin to sing. I'm going to pray step out when you feel like it's your time to spend your time worshiping the Lord with your communion. Lord, I thank you today. Thank you for the credible gift of your son. That you sent your one and only son that whosoever believeth in you shall not perish but have everlasting life. So today as we come and we partake of communion, we're declaring the eternal life that you have given us. We're declaring the incredible gift that you have given us. So Lord, receive our worship today. In Jesus' name. Yeah. 
left us right shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, come and have to. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, come and have to me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, come and No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me.
never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. Oh, you won't, Lord. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. Oh, you won't, Lord. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. Oh, Is that your declaration this morning? Some of us need to make a stand this morning as we go into 2018. Do you believe that? Can you proclaim that your God will not let you down? Can you take a step of faith this morning? Take a step that says, Lord, I don't have to see to believe. I don't have to see to believe because faith is seeing and believing before we receive. So this morning, we declare by faith that there is victory because our God is a victorious God. He did not die on a cross that we would live in a place of failure, in a place of loss, or in a place of defeat. He put his life on the cross so that we would have life and life abundant. Abundant life to us, to our children, to our spouses, to our grandchildren. We make declaration this morning at the start of 2018. You are a good and mighty God and you have made promises of victory and you have made promises of healing and you have made promises of provision and you have made promises of opportunity and God we stand on those promises this morning because you are a God that does not lie and we can take it to the bank without even seeing it so this morning Lord by faith we receive we receive from you this morning in Jesus name in Jesus name you're never gonna let me down, oh you are. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down, oh. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down, do you are?
can't do anything right. No wonder my boss won't promote me and my wife doesn't respect me. God's not finished with me yet. I can be the man he created me to be at work and at home. I can't believe he's acting like that. What a jerk. He must be having a really hard day. Maybe God put me here to make a difference in his life. I just can't stop doing this. I'm so frustrated with myself. I will always be this way. I can do this through Christ's strength. He will help me overcome. Succeeding at the big things has a lot to do with the little things. Thoughts, words, actions. So this morning we're starting a new series called Small Things, Big Difference. Small Things, Big Difference. I feel like this is a great series for us to kick off the new year um, and, and get launched in. You have some notes in your bulletin. Um, it, it is a new year. The gyms are full this week. <laughs> they won't be next week. Um, you know, Bible apps are downloaded. The junk food is thrown out of the cupboards. The treadmills and the exercise bikes are set up and ready to go. The New Year's resolutions have been made, all right? How many, how many set up a treadmill or a, a bike? So, no? All right, oh, good, good. Uh, you know, it, it's crazy. We went to the gym this week, Tuesday and Wednesday, and then Friday. And Tuesday and Wednesday, it was pretty full. A lot of new faces. And Friday, not quite so full. So, uh, you know, but that's kind of the, the statistics say that there's only about 13% of people that actually follow through with New Year's resolutions. Um, most of those that say they're going to get in shape, um, the, the big, busiest day in a gym is uh, the, the day after New Year's, um, the afternoon sessions are the busiest is what they say, um, from about 4 o'clock to eight o'clock at night because that's when everybody gets off work and it's that new day. We're going to go work out. Um, they say the slowest day is the third day after vacation because they're too sore and they'll never do that again. But, um, you know, but why, you know, why do we make New Year's resolutions, right? We made, how many have ever made a New Year's resolution, right? All, yeah, a lot of us have made those New Year's resolutions, like, we're going to eat better. We're going to exercise more. We're going to read the Bible. Uh, we're going to handle our money better. We're going to quit smoking or a bad habit. We're going to spend more time with the family. Um, and and we, can, we make these things. Why? Why? Because the New Year's, when the New Year comes, there's always a sense of hope. Sense of hope that I can change or I can be better, right? When, I, you know, you go into 2000, I came into 2018 going, there's some things I want to do better in my life. There's things, I want, areas I want to improve on. And I imagine most of us are in that situation. Um, you know, how many of you know of somebody that last year, they, some, they, you just saw some big, like, positive changes in their lives? Anybody you have people around you that you were just, like, looking at them going, wow, some major changes in their life, right? We've had some people here um, in, in our congregation um, Robert and Michelle, and, and I know Vicki, I mean, they, they're, they're disappearing. We're having to watch them because, you know, they're, they're, they're falling through the cracks in the chairs. They've lost so much weight. So, um, you know, it's great just seeing some changes in them, um, seeing people around me that, you know, have did better with their finances this last year. They, it just seems like they're following God's plan and God's pouring out blessings and, and they're being strengthened. So, um, those things are, those are inspiring, right? Aren't you inspired by people around you that you just see, man, their life's changing and things happening and you're like, oh yeah, I want to be like them. I wonder what big changes they made to get that result. I wonder what, man, they must have had to do something really radical to, to, to get that. And, and, and we want it. Uh, but we kind of look at them and we go, man, I just don't know. That's, that's, I'm a long ways from that. I don't think I can, I can do that. We wonder what big changes they make. Well, here's the thing. This is the, the series. This is the, the big idea of this series is this. It's often the small things that no one sees that result in the big things that everyone wants. You get that? 
It's often the small things that nobody sees, the things that we do in private, the things that we do when we're alone that, that lead to the results of the big things that everybody wants. You know, it's so easy to look at people. It's so easy to look at media and, and see people and see all these great things happening in their lives. And like, oh, we want it. But we don't actually see what got them there, what helped them get to that place. You know, so I did a, a survey this week. I started asking people some questions. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, still hanging on a little cough. Um, but, uh, you know, I did some surveys, and I want to know, you know, what, what is it that keeps you close to God, right? If I'm going into 2018, I think one of the things I desire every year is to grow in my relationship with the Lord, to be close to him. And so I, I sent out some questions from different people and just was asking them and, and got a lot of responses. Um, you know, one of the big ones is prayer. You know, you know, that's what happens when you ask Christian people uh, about getting, getting close to God because you can't ask non-Christians because they don't, you know, there's no desire. So, the, you know, that's big answer, prayer. Um, I was surprised that I only, only a couple of them responded with God's word, um, reading God's word. So they're not really good Christians. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. A lot of them were my family, my mom. So... My mom said hers is, is, is the Holy Spirit, prayer, Holy Spirit, and then walking with God daily. Um, but, you know, there's those people, like, you get those spiritual giants in your life, you go, man, it, it just seems so easy for them. Like, they don't, they don't struggle with anything. They just walk in God. You know, it doesn't matter what the situation is. They're just like, oh, thank you, Jesus, for this headache. I love you, God. Give me another migraine tomorrow, you know. <laughs> I don't get it, you know. But they, you, you know, you see that. And there's, there's some things, you know, as I was going through this and had some of my, one of my, my kids responded who his relationship is pretty distant. But he was saying, you know, for him, it was prayer and talking to God throughout the day and being grateful for the blessings, being grateful for the blessings. And I, I thought that was really cool. Um. You know, and then, you know, uh, one of my kids said food that they need to eat because if they're hangry, that's when you're hungry and you get angry, they can't grow in God. They can't focus. So I won't tell you who that was, Tiff. Um, but, um, but she was probably speaking for the rest of us. But there was just some things. And I, as I read that, it was like, man, that's so awesome to hear how people grow close to God. But it's really not big things. It's the little things we do. I heard this a lot. I talk to God throughout the day, continually throughout the day. You know, we think we gotta, oh, we got, I gotta set aside an hour and a half and I gotta read my Bible and I gotta get my concordances out and resources out. I gotta tear scripture apart and then I gotta pray for 45 minutes and then I will grow in my faith. And Jesus says, walk with me daily. Walk with me daily. It's the little things. It's the little things. Now, uh, also, you know, last year, uh, about this time, we signed up and did a boot camp and tr to get in shape. And so um, lost quite a bit of weight, gained quite a bit of weight back. So I need to go to boot camp again. But um, I'm actually, I'm down at least 12 pounds from where I was at this time last year. And I can tie my shoes without running out of breath. That's a, that was a goal, is I wanted to be able to tie my shoes. Now, today I can't quite bend down because I spent the yesterday painting. So my knees aren't working and my back's not working and my shoulder's not working. So I'm walking around really stiff today. But um, we did this, you know, we went to this boot camp. And I can remember the first time I got introduced to my coach. His name's Bear. I've told you about him before. And it's always interesting when you're going to do a physical fitness boot camp and your coach is named Bear. I mean, that's just a scary thing. But... You know, he's uh, a little younger than me, really in good shape. Um, you, know, you know, he drops down and does push-ups and burpees like they're nothing. You know, I'm looking for oxygen after two or three. Um, you know, I was asked, you know, when I met with him, I began to talk to him. I said, what is it? You know, what do I got to do? You know, and he really broke it down. He said, you know, it's really, you don't got to be in the gym all day. 
He said, you know, three, or three to five times a week, if you can get in for the 45-minute workout, um, and then just try to eat better. They say this a lot at the gym. You can't out-exercise bad nutrition. You can't put garbage in and go to the gym and expect that you're going to fix all that garbage you put in. And, and so there was just some little things I had to learn to, to grow in through this year. And so I'm doing a fairly good job of staying in the gym, not quite as good a job at the eating right. Um, that's uh, the carbs. I love carbs. Um, I love to load up on carbs even if I'm not working out. Um, but uh, so I got I to gotta work on those things. Another area that I was talking to people about and that I've looked at for years is what does it take for a healthy marriage? And I've heard this in several different seminars or marriage conferences is this, uh, pray together daily, pray together daily. And this is something that when, when Shelly and I got married um, six years ago, six plus years ago, is that I made a commitment that I was going to pray with my wife. Now, this is not an easy one. It's very easy for me to get up here and pray for all of us corporately. It's another thing to stop, sit with my wife or stand outside the car and pray with her and pray over her. It's, it's intimidating because she's like a spiritual giant. And, you know, and I, you know, and she's got lots of wisdom. And so, but I tell you what, it's one of the most valuable things we do as a couple. And it's real simple and it's easy. It's the small things that no one else sees that result in the big things that everybody wants. You want a healthy marriage, I guarantee you start praying for each other every day. It's really hard to hate somebody that you're praying blessings over. It's really hard to get mad at them when you're sitting there holding their hands and praying for them, right? It, it is, it is, it's tough. Um, you know, listen, uh, if we're, we're completely honest with ourselves and, and others, there are probably several things we would like to see change in our lives over this coming year. The dilemma is, is how do we make those changes? So we're going to go into the, a book in the Old Testament, Zechariah chapter 4. <coughs> Excuse me. Zechariah chapter 4, verses 6 through 10 uh, this morning, and, and discover some things about changes in our life and how we make changes. Um, so the background here is the Israelites have been led into captivity once again. It just seems to be their uh, way of life. Um, and when they were led into captivity, their enemies destroyed the temple. They, they demolished the temple of God. And so in about 537 B.C., uh, Zerubbabel led a remnant of Israelites back from captivity to the land of Israel. And 18 years later, God spoke to him. 18 years later, now he is the king of Israel. Um, and God spoke to King uh, Zerubbabel. That's a weird name, Zerubbabel. I like that name. I'm going to name a kid that. No, I'm not having any more kids. Um, <laughs> So 18 years later, he spoke to, to the king, and he said, rebuild the temple. Rebuild the temple, and then God empowered him to do it. And this is kind of that story that we're going to get into here in Zechariah. Zechariah was a prophet of Israel, and he came to the king and was speaking to the king in this portion of scriptures. He said this, then he said to me, this is what the Lord says to Zerubbabel. It is not by force nor by strength, but by my spirit, says the Lord of heaven's armies. So let's stop right there. The changes that you want to make this year in your life, the, the real changes, the, the things that you, every, those big changes that everybody wants in their lives, are, are really only going to happen when we understand it's not by force. It's not by our strength. Uh, it is by the Spirit of God. You know, there's a lot of things in my life that I've tried to change in the years, and I'm a very strong-willed person. I, if I set my mind to something, it's really hard to, to, to get, me, get me off of that. And yet I have found when it comes to things that I've wanted to change in my life, especially habits, 
bad habits, my will is a pansy when it comes to bad habits. I can't do it. I can't force it. I don't have enough strength. And, and so I have learned that there's just some areas in my life that, that without the Spirit of God, not by force, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So the God is saying to, to the king, he's saying, you know, it, this, you're going to have to, you need me to rebuild the temple. You're going to need me to make changes in your life in 2018. You are going to need the spirit of God to strengthen you supernaturally, to give you the wisdom and the understanding to make those changes. You see, transformation and change, true transformation change comes through the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit working in us. It's when we place our faith in him, in the king of kings. Let's go on. Verse 7 says this. Nothing, not even a mighty mountain, will stand in Zerubbabel's way. It will become a level plain before him. And when Zerubbabel sets the final stone of the temple in place, the people will shout, may God bless it. May God bless it. You see, here's the thing, is when we walk with the Spirit, when we're not just trying to do it on our own strength and our, by our own might, there is nothing that can stand in the way. Those things that you felt like in 2017, man, they're just still hanging on. I can't get past those. I can't get over those. Uh, this, this area of my, my marriage or this area in my work, this area of my finances, I just can't get it past it. Listen, when we walk with the Spirit, we walk by the power of the Spirit, nothing can stop us. Not even a mountain can get in the way when we live by faith. If God is asking us to change, nothing can stop that change. The other thing we see here in verse 7 that I thought was really cool, it says this. Uh, Zechariah is saying this from the Lord. He says, and when Zerubbabel sets the final stone, here's the key there. The change that God's asking you to make, the things he's wanting to transform in your life, he's already seen the completion. He's already seen the final work. He's, he's sitting here at the temple. They haven't even started to build the temple, yet he's saying, and when Zerubbabel sets the final stone, not by strength, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord, you're going to go, you're going to rebuild this temple. Nothing's going to stand in your way because I see the completion. You see, God sees the completed work in your life. He sees what he wants you to be at the end of 2018. And he says, I will help you. I will strengthen you. I will give you the power. Even when we cannot see the big results we're wanting, God already sees the end. He already knows the big results that are going to take place in our lives. And then we go down, continue in verse 8. Then another message came to me from the Lord. Zerubbabel is the one who laid the foundation of this temple, and he will complete it. Then you will know that the Lord of heaven's army has sent me. Now listen to this, verse 10. Do not despise the small, these small beginnings. He's saying, King, don't, don't get caught up. Don't, don't get caught up in this, the small beginnings. People, don't get caught up in the small beginnings. Don't despise the small beginnings. Just because you don't see the big results, don't despise the small beginnings. For the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. He didn't say, oh, the Lord rejoices when you complete the work and you're all healthy and you're all where you need to be. He says, the Lord rejoices when the work begins. He says this, to see the plumb line in Zerubbabel's hand. Just, the Lord said, just, he's looking at this, he's looking at Zerubbabel, he's looking at the king, and he's like, I'm rejoicing all you have is the plumb line in your hand. You're just trying, starting to lay it out. You're just, you're just, you're just, you don't despise these little beginnings. 
Because it's the small things that no one else sees that lead to the big things that everyone wants. You say it this way. It's the small things that most people don't want to do that lead to the big things that everybody wants in their life. You see, we often get frustrated with the small things or the small beginnings because we are an instant society and we don't see instant results, so then we decide to give up, right? Our marriage is falling apart. We need reconciliation, so we go to counseling once. We read a couple verses or we read a book about marriage, and the marriage doesn't in instantly become blissful. We want to throw in the towel. He's like, God's sitting back going, wait a minute. I'm going to rejoice in the small beginnings. Israelites, hundreds of years you've made mistakes and you're in captivity. <laughs> Don't think it's all going to happen overnight. People, you've been messing up your marriage for years. You've been messing up your finances for years. Don't think it's all going to get fixed overnight. It's the small beginnings that God's going to rejoice in. But often we throw in the towel. We put our finances together. We put a budget together. Something happens in the middle of the month that it gets messed up. And we say, well, that's pointless. We tithe for a couple months and we don't become instant millionaires. See, pastor, I told you that tithing thing don't work. Getrichdaddy.com. We, we have bad habits, so we get the patch. We get some accountability partners. We dump out all the alcohol. We pay for strength, and we slip up once, and we throw in the towel. I'll never overcome this. God says, no. Don't despise the small beginnings. Don't despise the small beginnings because the Lord rejoices in them. Don't despise the small beginnings. You see, when this happened and this, when this, they began to build this temple, you know, there were, there were many who were unimpressed. They were unimpressed with the rebuilding of the temple, with the small beginnings. In Ezra, back in Ezra, in the book of Ezra, this is like a lot of Old Testament scriptures. You guys are going to have to go look them up. They are actually in the Bible. Some of you didn't know that. There's a book called Ezra in the Bible. Um, it, it says this. It was talking about this time. It was talking about this temple being built. Watch this. It says, <coughs> excuse me, I shouldn't mute that mic. Um, nobody shake my hands afterwards because I've been coughing at them. Uh, it says this in Ezra 3.12. It says, many older priests and Levites and other leaders remembered the first temple, and they wept aloud when they saw the temple's foundation. They wept. They were very, they were unimpressed. You go, how do you know that? Because it says this. To, uh, but others, however, were shouting with joy. Others were like, great, at these small beginnings, these priests that had seen the incredible temple that King David had built, the incredibleness of it, the majesty of it. They're looking at this small foundation, and they begin to weep. All right? Listen. Don't get caught up in just trying to see the big picture. Be faithful in the small things. Because it's the small things that accomplish the big things, the incredible things, the miraculous results come out of the small things. Remember King David? Before he was King David, he was David, the youngest child of the family, a little redheaded, rudy looking boy out taking care of the sheep. With his little slingshot, he was taking down the wolves and the lions and the bears. Why? Because it was in those little things, as he was faithful in those little things, God prepared him to face Goliath. And he took down what all the rest were hiding in the camp and didn't want to do. But David was willing to do the little things. Remember Ruth? The story of Ruth? Her and her mother-in-law, their, their men were killed. But yet she stayed faithful to her mother-in-law, Naomi, and worked in the fields with her. And then she married Boaz and became a huge influence for the Israelites, for the people. Remember Daniel? 
We always sing it, Daniel in the lion's den. Oh, man, what a mighty man of faith. Man, he just, no situation was going to, you know, push him back. Well, what did Daniel do every day that nobody else did? He did the small things every day, three times a day. He prayed. He didn't just walk up, wake up one day and go, oh, I'm going to go get in the lion's den and see how my faith does. It was the small things that brought the big results. You see, it's often the small things that no one else sees that results in the big things that everybody wants. How many of you have heard of a guy named John Wooden? Few, few basketball fans. John Wooden was a basketball coach for the University of UCLA, um, probably one of the winningest coaches in the, in, in the history. He had 10 NCAA championships. Not only that, he did something that nobody has done since. He won seven of them in a row. That seven years back to back, he had the best basketball team in the nation. He was a phenomenal coach, um, he, he, and he's a great speaker. I've been to several leadership conferences where he has spoke uh, about leadership, and one of the times he was in an interview, and there was, uh, he was asked a question, you know, you're such, you're such an incredible coach. Like, look at these huge results. Like, nobody's ever seen results like this. Nobody's seen winning like this, and they're like, what, what's the secret? What do you do when those new players come in fresh out of high school? How do you get them so that they're a championship team at the end of the year? He said this. This is our first practice. Starts in the locker room. We all sit down at our benches, and he goes, I show each player how to put their so socks on right. And we practice on how we put our socks on. Because if you put your socks on wrong, you get blisters. And if you get blisters, you don't play as hard and you don't work as hard. Or you may be out of game. So we're going to start with the small things. How do you put your socks on? How do you put your shoes on? And that's where we start to build a great team for the end of the season. He has this quote. He says this. It's the little things that are vital. Little things make big things happen. So today, it's this, we're going to kind of land here. It's the small adjustments that make a big difference. So over the next several weeks, we're going to look at how we can make some small adjustments in 2018 that will make a big difference in our lives. And so the areas we're going to look at over this series, over the next weeks, we're going to look at our thoughts. Our thoughts. Luke 6, 45 talks about we speak from the heart and, the heart, and from the heart comes our thoughts, both good and evil. So we need to look at our thoughts. What's going on in our thought life? What's happening up here? Because what's happening up here is going to impact here that's going to come to the next thing. It's going to come out of here. So the next thing we're going to look at is our words. For the tongue can bo both bring life or death. Words matter. So that's something we're going to look at. Small adjustments will make a big difference. And then the final thing is, is our thoughts go to our heart, become our words. Our words turn into actions, and our actions turn into habits. So the fourth area we're going to look at is our habits. Matthew 7, 20. Our actions, our habits will identify us. We become what we repeatedly do. So we're going to wrap up this morning. This series, Small Things, Big Difference. Andrew's going to come. We're going to show this video. Cowboy leads a different kind of life when there were cowboys. They're a dying breed. Still means something to me, though. A couple of days, we'll move this herd across the river, drive through the valley. Oh, <laughs> there's nothing like bringing in a herd. See, now that's great. Your life makes sense to you. <laughs> 
What's so funny? You city folk, you worry about a lot. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. Uh, how old are you? 38. 39. Yeah. You all come up here about the same age, same problems. Spend about 50 weeks a year getting knots in your rope, and then, and then you think two weeks up here will have time for you. None of you get it. Do you know what the secret of life is? No, what? This. Your finger? One thing. Just one thing. You stick to that and everything else don't mean. That's great, but what's the one thing? That's what you gotta figure out. What's your one thing? I love that movie, I love that clip. What's your one thing in 2018? That God's saying you can change. You see, the Bible's full of one things. Jesus said to Martha, one thing is needed. Paul said this, one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, I press on. King David said this, one thing I desire is to dwell in the house of the Lord. Jesus said to the rich young ruler, one thing you lack, go sell and give. A lot of one things. What's your one thing this year? What's your one thing? Here's what I want to challenge you. This is a challenge. What's the one thing God's saying? This is your area to change. This is your transformation in 2018. And with that, I want to bring a narrower focus. I want to bring it in really tight. So I want you to, this week, as we go into this fast, as we begin to seek God for what God's going to do in our lives, in our families, um, in, in our finances, in our church, in the body of Christ, as we're seeking God, I want you to pray for that one thing. And then I want you to narrow that down, that focus down to one word. What's your one word for the year that's going to remind you, that's going to bring to uh, recollection this one thing that God's working on you this year? And then find one verse that goes with it. Because I believe God wants to do some incredible things. I believe God is calling us to a new, new place. Isaiah 54, 2 says, Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back in 2018. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. It's the small things that maybe some people don't want to do. Oh, that's too much work. It's too much work to stretch out my tent. It's too much work to lengthen the cords. I don't got enough cord. <laughs> strengthen my stakes. Man, do you know I, I'm, I'm, I'm walking on shaky ground. What stakes are you talking about? Well, your walk with him. Your relationship with him. Your dependence on him. Remember, it's often the small things that no one else sees that results in the big things that everyone wants. What's that word? What's that verse? For me here, here's the one thing God's challenged me to work on this year. One word is balance. You see, for almost five years now, I have poured my heart, my soul, my energy, my blood at times, my body into launching this church. To the detriment sometimes of my marriage, and my family my own house. There's so many projects that are on my honey-do list that have been there for five years. And as I went into this, as I finished out last year, I said, Lord, I'm just, I'm tired. I don't know how much further I can go. And that's when he began to deal with me on this small stuff. He said, balance. balance your walk with me with your walk with your wife. You need to balance your walk with your wife with your life with your children. You need to 
balance all that with the ministry I've called you. And then down somewhere close to 10th on the list, the church came in. You go, man, are you just like, what are you doing? No, man, I, it's in my nature. I'm going to bust my tail no matter what. It's, it's my, but I feel like God's saying, balance, drop. And here's my verse, Ephesians 5, 15. Be careful then how you live, Tracy, not as unwise, but as wise. Walk in balance. That's my word. Here's the truth we got to walk in this year. If we are faithful in the small things, God will trust us with the big things. See, for me, if I am faithful in walking in balance and and doing right in my home and with my wife, then then God's going to trust me with bigger things. Don't despise don't despise the small beginnings. Back on Sylvan when we were 25 strong, <laughs> meeting behind Percos, me having to help lead worship that was terrible. You really should have despised that one. Don't despise the small things. So now we set about 140 adults and 30 to 40 kids. And God's saying it's time for balance. Be faithful in the small things and I'll trust you with big things. The parable of the talents, 5, 2, and 1. And when they came back in verse 21 in Matthew chapter 25, it says, The master was full of praise. He said, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Some of you are like, oh, God, I want this and I want that. And he's like, hey, could you just handle that that I gave you? Lord, if you would just give me more money, I would tithe. Goes, no, no, no. Be faithful with the little can't give you a lot if you can't handle the little. Lord, I really want this promotion in my job. Well, then be faithful where you're at. Be faithful where you're at. Right? Whether we eat, drink, sleep, marry, work, whatever we do, we're to give glory to God. So if you don't like where you're at in your job, start giving glory to God for it and then see what he does biblical truth. If we're faithful in the small things, God will trust us with the big things. So as we close this morning, maybe you're hearing the one small thing that can make the biggest difference, the greatest difference in 2018 is this. Surrender. Surrender. Some of you have been trying to do it on your own for so long. And you think, well, God's ways are not my ways exactly because your ways look where it's gotten you look where it's landed his ways are higher than your ways well if I surrender to God then he's going to take everything from me maybe he needs to take everything from you so he can give you something that's better biggest thing today is surrendering your life to Jesus and inviting him to live in your heart as Lord and Savior. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, if that's you, God's word says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It's the greatest transformation of your life. If that's you this morning and you say, you know what, 2018, it's my year to surrender. And you'd say, that's me. I want to pray with you this morning. And you would just raise up your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for our sins. Lord, today we surrender our lives to you. We ask for forgiveness from you. Lord, and we make you Lord and ruler of our lives. 
Lord, may we surrender all the big stuff and be faithful in the small stuff so that you can pour out your blessings upon us. Lord, I thank you for the gift of eternal life that we get to receive today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, as you get ready to leave today, I have a handout for you to take home. It's called Talk It Over. And it just is something that it will help you take the message today and begin to put the next steps, the action steps to what we want to do to, to find that word, to find that verse. It will give you some questions so that you can talk it over with those you're close to. It will give you some tools to get through this week and to help you as we walk in this fast. So you're going to pick that up on your way out. But I want to challenge you today. What's the one thing? What's the one word? And what's the one verse? And here's what I'm going to ask. As you discover those, would you post them to our Facebook page or send them to us? Get them to us. I want to know what God's going to do. And that's the other thing is once you, once you get it out there, once you tell other people, then you're accountable. <laughs> right? I've told you, balance. My wife now knows, so now I'm accountable. I was hoping she would be sick, sick today so I wouldn't be accountable. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. But that's this year. Small things, big difference. Do the small things that nobody else sees and watch the incredible result that God is going to bring. Would you stand with us this morning? As Shelly comes, she's going to let you go. She's going to remind you of a couple things. I hope you have an incredible start of your new year. Join us in the fast. Hey, guys, let's just pray real quick. Father, we just thank you so much for today. I thank you for the spirit of excitement and anticipation, God, and faith rising that, that we already feel as we start this year off, God. And we look forward, Lord, to, to our one word, uh, our one thing, our one scripture. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, guys, make sure you keep your calendars. This big one is the one for our church. This skinny one is the one for the network. And don't forget about cookies and board things. All right, that's all I got. Love you all. See ya.